Ah, thank you so much. Well, the main event is about to start. <laughs> this lady has been showing up now for a few months. It seems like it seems like a while, doesn't it? Uh, because we're in a process. It's going to take us from one stage of our being to another, and we have been so terrifically guided by someone who took an extra year or so of training after completing a, a successful uh, 25 years co-ministering a successful res uh, uh, center of her own with her husband, John. And what she has been bringing to us, you can all feel it and you're about to feel some more of it. So I'm just going to ask Rev Cass to come on up and, and wow us with some more. Thank you, Mel. And I'll do my best to wow you. <laughs> good morning, it's so good to be back and to be with all of you. How are you doing? Good, that's good to hear. So, how many of you love these bodies? <laughs> how many of you, how many of us are taking care of these bodies? Good, good, we're, wor we're working in that direction. You know, do we give them our best love and attention or do we ignore them, deny them? Uh, you know, consider them less than, or we say this old thing, you know, or, you know, get frustrated with them. You know, it tells a lot about someone and how much they love themselves by how they talk about their bodies. You know, we don't always put that in the equation, but, you know, it is our interface with the world, you know. They're an extension of us. So, we're talking about loving them today. So if you're here in the room today, you're in the right place. Now most of us, unless we were brought up in a cave with wolves, <laughs> um, have been given lots of messages about our bodies. Am I right? You know, if it's not religion talking about the sins of the flesh, you know, then it's, you know, science and, you know, science putting, wonderful as these religion and science are, you know, putting restrictions on what these bodies can do and what they're capable of. And so we're not, and then we have marketing. How could I forget marketing? You know, you know, trying to sell us products that'll make us look younger, you know, giving us messages that, you know, we're just not enough as we are that we need something more to, you know, to add to us. Not many messages of love, you know, are we getting. Well, the Science of Mind message, here's a quote from the Science of Mind textbook. It says, the body is the house, a sacred container, if you will. It's a house in which, for the present, you are living, and you need to keep it in good repair by a right mental attitude uh, toward it, experiences, and people. Your body is entitled to respect. So our bodies are some part of the larger body of God, or the larger body of spirit, which makes them very holy. We don't always think about them that way. So there's three points that I would like to get across today. There are many points we could be talking about regarding our bodies, but the first is I'd like to talk a little bit about what these bodies can do because I think if we have a better idea of just some of the things that they can do, we will, it'll be easier for us to love and honor and respect them more and to give up some of our old attitudes or the old way that we maybe talk about them. Secondly, I'd like to talk about how a good, positive attitude is key to our healings. You know, our health is dependent on our happiness. 
So we say, you know, I will be happy when I lose 50 pounds, or I'll be happy when I get rid of this cancer. Well, we have to be happy first. We have to be happy. The body, happy, or happy body, or happy people, you know, are key to happy bodies, healing bodies. So, you know, we really have to give these bodies their due. They are million-year-old healers. We cannot underestimate them. And the third point that I want to get across is, is that we have to give life messages that we are here to stay, that we want to be here. We kind of give a mixed message many times. We say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm here, but we're not all in. And we have to give life messages that we're strong, that we're healthy, that we are engaged in life-supporting activities, and that we want to live. So those are the three points I'm attempting to get across today. So hang on to your seats, because I know I'm, I have Hazel right here. She's clocking me. <laughs> So, and only because just somebody's got to do it, right? <laughs> so what can these bodies do? Well, I would like to start with uh, a few things from Deepak Chopra. He is just, uh, I know most of you have heard of him before. He's the famous author and alternative medicine advocate. He is doing some amazing things, uh, you know, on mind, body, and spirit. And regarding our body's immune systems, he says to fend off even the common cold requires the immune system to know and remember every disorder our genetic line has ever experienced. Just that one thing to fend off the common cold. Then to activate the white blood cells that can recognize a foreign invader leads to a whole sequence of precise set of chemical reactions that defeat the incoming virus. Now here's the thing, this is happening thousands of times a day, thousands of times a day, and we are oblivious to it. We have no idea what our body is really doing to support us in being here. So this is only one example, small example, of a self-healing system that shows intelligence, resilience, creativity. And it's just really, truly a miracle that we're alive. It's truly a miracle that we're alive. So, you know, we're just so supported. Every cell in our body is less than three years old. Stomach lining is replaced every three to five days. You get a new liver uh, in less than a year it takes to get a new liver. There are 27 bones in our hands alone. 26 in our feet along with 30 joints and more than 100 tendons and ligaments all working together to support us in getting around. That's a miracle in itself, all of that. We're not thinking about that as we're going about the things that we're doing every day. And isn't it wonderful that we don't, have to, we don't have to be paying attention to making all of those parts work? Our microbiome is over 200,000 bacteria. So if you're trying to get away from bacteria, we are more bacteria than we are DNA. <laughs> so that's just how it is. Now here's a sideline. I thought you'd be interested. It's, you know, a little bit of a little bit off to topic, but I think it's pretty fascinating. Humankind is 200,000 years old, which you know that's a big number, and then that's not really a big number for, you know, who we really have evolved to. But in the beginning, here's the interesting part. In the beginning, there were different species of humans on the planet. And they communicated about food, sex, danger, uh, where to sleep. And they only, as a group, could get to about 100 in, in size. They could only get to about 100. Because they didn't have the skills to communicate 
about anything else. The group that developed the ability to basically gossip, <laughs> talk about other people and what they're doing, <laughs> Well, those were the ones that survived and expanded, and that's who we are today. It's still kind of about gossip, isn't it? <laughs> but really, it's, it's not. I'm not promoting gossip. I just had a whole, we had a whole workshop about <laughs> not going in those places. But it really is interesting how everything serves and how how much the subject matter expanded our development and what we could do and our survival as a species. So I thought you'd be interested in that. Here's another one. Scientific method says that there is 70% these estimate these are estimates 70% uh, of matter or 70% of the universe rather is is dark energy the formless. 29% is dark matter, so it's matter because it behaves like matter but you still can't see it. And then 1%, some say 5%, is what we can see. So let's just say we can see 5% of matter. We can see 5%. So that means that if we're looking at these bodies, you know, that is really not a lot. There's a we are so much more than we appear to be. You know, there's space between, you're only seeing 5% of me. The rest is space. Go figure. <laughs> you know, there's more to me, more to you than meets the eye. This infers that these bodies are very changeable. You know, we think that we, and, and they're not a thing. They're not the thing that we've had with us since the day that we were born. You know, they're not the same bodies every three years. Something entirely new. So they really are more of a process than a thing. And it's important for us to know that when we're working on healing or changing something in our bodies. It's much more doable than we realize. And it's much more doable to, um, to work with, before the f with the formless before it even comes into form. And even when things do come into their full fruition in, in form, you know, we can do something about that as well. So we've been given this prototype but of, of this body to last our whole life. And yet, we have a new body every three years. So. That's my first part. Second is I received this email recently from one of our newer people before we retired. And she, was, uh, she said, hi, Kath. She was thanking me for agreeing to uh, review her, this book that she's working on, on abuse. And then she says, I'm going to read it to you because it's so wonderful. On a totally different note, the training in Science of Mind that I received, thanks to you and John, has recently played a major role in my life. My neck was broken in two places, as was my pelvis in a car accident on Thanksgiving evening. My right wrist and left index finger were also broken. Although I was in shock and teeming with adrenaline, I somehow had the clarity to know that there was a purpose to the accident and lessons to be learned from it. I lived with my brother and sister-in-law until February 16th. The final doctor appointment took place on April 13th. Gratitude filled my mind from the time I found myself in the hospital and continues to this day. I thought how fortunate that no one else had bad or permanent injuries, no one died, no one was going to jail, my injuries were not permanent, I had a family who was able to take care of me. Initially, I couldn't use my hands or walk by myself, and that sounds awful, but we found humor in that crazy situation and laughed a lot. My insurance covered everything, and today you would never know anything happened to me. 
The body is miraculous. Circumstances could have been so much worse. Just wanted to thank both of you for putting so much into the center and offering such wonderful lessons. Tracy. Her beautiful, joyful spirit, her positive attitude, helped her body heal more quickly. And it makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. So we have to be happy before the healing. We have to get it right inside of ourselves. We have to give life. This is the third one, the message that we are here to stay, at least until we decide that we're we don't want to be here anymore. If we want to enjoy these bodies, as long as we are here, we have to continually give them the message that we're here to stay, that we're doing things to promote our health and our well-being. I just had uh, an amazing opportunity. I came in a day early. I uh, have an old family friend that I had not seen probably in 20, 25 years, maybe. He's a quadriplegic. He's my age, and in his 20s, he had a, uh, a diving, he do dove into some uh, waters that were too shallow in Florida. So he's been living as a quadriplegic for the last 35, 40 years. And spending a day with him and seeing what he goes through to make every little thing happen, and thank God he married his nurse, or and, and she is there, you know, to help him do these things. But just to spend a day with someone and see what they go through, I'm going to stop complaining about anything that my body's doing. It is just, it was a, I think the universe set that up. I was supposed to have a lesson before I even gave this talk today. Very precious man and very spiritual and... Um, Here's one thing that he shared I thought was good. He said, you know, my body, a typical body might be able to do 15,000 different things. My body can only do 5,000. 5, but he goes, I don't focus on the 15,000. I focus on the five. I focus on the things that I can do. And I thought, oh my gosh, what a beautiful person. And he drove me up here. You know, he drove me up here. We walked around the, the I know it's the square or whatever you call it. <laughs> I guess it's not supposed to be called a square, but I don't have the other word yet. <laughs> so um, anyway, it was just, he every day he's giving life by all of the actions that he has to take to make every little thing from getting dressed to eating to whatever it is, getting in the car and getting out of the car is a huge process. He is telling life, I'm here to stay. I want to live and he is healthier than most quadriplegics and very, very active. He said he's, you know, he's, he was in the Special Olympics uh, years ago in, in Seoul. Uh, he has put 70,000 miles, he's tracked his miles uh, that he does, you know, extra than just regular everyday stuff. And, and amazing, an amazing person. So, we really have to start telling a different story. A different story if we're ever gonna break out of the old one. Those of you who are familiar with the Abraham teachings, they say that we have a reset button. We are, our bodies are reset every night when we go to bed. And, the, and what happens the next day is whether we pick up the old story and keep that going or if we pick up the new one. It's a great spiritual practice. It's much more difficult than it sounds, but it's definitely worth working on. So, you know, all of these ideas are worthy of practice. And it doesn't matter how far you get with them. It just matters that we make some progress because we're never going to get it done. <laughs> we're never going to get it done. We're eternal beings. So it's about mastering more about our, our bodies and our outer conditions. And feeling better is what it's all about. Feeling better is what it's all about. I'd like to close with a poem by Holly Holden to help support us through our practice. Today I asked my body what she needed. 
which is a big deal considering my journey of not really asking that much. I thought she might need more water or protein or greens or yoga or supplements or movement. But as I stood in the shower reflecting on her stretch marks, her roundness where I would like flatness, her softness where I'd like firmness, all those conditioned wishes that form a bundle of never quite rightness, she whispered very gently, could you just love me like this? Could you just love me like this? So that's our, that's our work. So let's know this in closing. Let's take a few big deep breaths if that's comfortable for you. And just breathe into your being and just appreciate just being alive and being in this wonderful room with all of these beautiful beings. And we hear the water in the background. And we just feel comfortable in these bodies and we make a decision to love them and to give them more attention and to be more aware of what they're asking for. We are immersed in this divine, holy, loving presence that inspires us, guides us, that gave us these beautiful bodies to move about freely and easily in the world. They allow us to do all of the things that we want to do. And so we are so grateful. We make a vow today to give them more of our love and attention and to accept them as they are. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Universe. Thank you, God. I release this treatment knowing all is well and that we love these bodies from here on out. And please say together with me, and so it is. Thank you. Thank you.